When Sakura woke up, it was almost dawn. The muffled cries and loud bangs made it impossible for her to stay asleep. She tried to block out the sounds of her parents making love by turning over and putting a pillow over her ears. But then she realized that her parents' room was at the other end of the hall and the sounds were coming from her closet. Sakura jumped out of bed, grabbed a kunai from the table next to it, and walked slowly toward the closet door. She took a deep breath to calm down, then pulled open the door ready to deal with whatever was inside. Her screams were loud enough to wake up the whole neighborhood and bring the night watch to her room, where they found her unconscious on a bloody floor and a small note stuck to her body. Sunati scowled as she hurried through the hospital and hurriedly made her way to the emergency ward, her brow scrunched up in thought. She had just been told by an ANBU team that Uchiha Sasuke had been brought back to the village, but he was in terrible shape at the council's request she rushed to the hospital to help save his life even though there were already dozens of doctors working on the case when she walked into the ward she saw that it was a big mess nurses were running around trying to help the doctors who were all working on what looked like a bloody pile of meat her fear of blood almost came back when she saw how much damage had been done to the body and how much blood was coming out of it she used a chakra spike to get everyone's attention and told them to calm down then she pulled one of the doctors out of the group and asked for an update i don't know how to put it into words hokage sama he should have died hours ago the fact that he is still alive is a miracle in and of itself the doctor said looking very confused what do you mean sunade asked as she looked at the body and tried not to shiver well for one thing he's already lost enough blood for three people but his body keeps making more and more whoever did this didn't want him to die from blood loss the doctor looked at the blood on his face and frowned how do you know that someone else did this Sunade asked with a small frown i don't know of any way to get the blood back this fast she had been trying for years to find a way to stop blood loss which is one of the top three reasons shinobi died in the field we found several seals on his body the doctor said pointing to a stack of scrolls on a nearby table jiraiya sama has already looked at them and written them down for later use from what he could figure out one of the seals keeps the victim from losing consciousness or going into shock another makes the pain receptors more sensitive and the last one refills blood at an incredibly fast rate we're having trouble healing the patient because of that last seal sunade was amazed by the power of these seals nothing like this had ever been done before they had tried many times to make seals like those four use in healing as well as torture and interrogation but the complexity of the human body made it hard to do what do you mean we can't heal him she asked after a second of silence putting the seals away in her mind to think about later the seal makes him make so much blood that if we shut him up without taking it out his body would swell up and explode in a matter of seconds the doctor said sunade nodded to show that she had come to the same conclusion until jiraiya sama figures out a safe way to break the seal all we can do is try to make him feel less pain and let him bleed to death sunade nodded her head to show that she agreed and then left the other medics could take care of things for now what are the full extent of his injuries she asked wincing as she looked at the body again the doctor picked up the patient's chart from a nearby table and began to read multiple cuts of different sizes all over his torso his legs and arms seemed to have been cut open and the bones taken out his eyes have been replaced with two balls of ice that don't seem to be melting his scrotum and penis were both flayed his whole face was skinned and his chest was ripped open and all of his non-essential organs were taken out the doctor read looking green as he did so even if we save him he won't be a ninja anymore he'll probably spend the rest of his life in bed even with the blood test the only way we knew it was uchiha sasuke was because someone left a note with the body, Tsunade, almost threw up when he saw all of the boy's injuries. He should have died from shock or blood loss, and he was barely still alive because of seals that were meant to hurt him more. It was just cruel, she managed to ask, with a grimace of sympathy for the Uchiha, what was on the note. The doctor flipped through the pages until he found the right one. His face turned pale as he read the note out loud, Air. Here is your precious Uchiha back, Namake's Naruto. Enjoy this gift for as long as you can he said his voice shaking and uncertain when he saw the shocked look on the okage's face he did the smart thing and went back to helping his teammates how could you do this naruto how could you tsunade wailed and twisted her face in fear time skip kanoa okage sama we have a situation an ox masked anbu shouted as he entered the kage's office tsunade was startled when she woke up at her desk with a piece of paper on her face what's wrong ox she asked as she took the page away from her face the gates hokage sama namake's naruto is at the gates he shouted making the blonde kage jump to her feet her chakra flare and call an anbu squad ox go to the anbu headquarters and give this message to yamato have all squads ready for battle cat take your squad and do the same with the jonin and chunin 
Have all gin and ready to evaluate the civilians at the first sign of trouble. If you see Jiraiya, tell him to head to the gates. She told her shinobi what to do. And they nodded as they were getting ready to leave. A huge explosion shook the village, making them trip. Tsunade gasped and turned to her window. Okami, the huge gates of Kanoa and the wall around it were in ruins, and the Shodan's own huge trees were burning with black flames that surrounded the whole village and trapped everyone inside. Ignore my previous orders and go straight to the gate. Send any civilians or jin into the shelters. Tsunade ordered as she turned, the ANBU vanishing with. Their body flickers, ten minutes ago, standing at Kanoa's main gate. Team 8 were signing out for a mission, a simple patrol around the village and area, because Naruto was such a threat. The Hokage and Council had told most teams that they could only go on missions in Fire Country. Missions outside of the country were too dangerous for anyone but the best, as they got ready to jump into the trees. A small area of space a few feet from the gate seemed to ripple and then open up into a dark void. A cloaked figure slowly stalked out of the void and made its way towards the gates. Karina was the first to get her bearings again. The two gate guards were completely dumbfounded by what they were seeing. She took a step forward and faced the figure coming toward her, as was her job as a Kanahan shinobi. Stop. Tell us your name and what you're doing, or we'll have to hold you. Karina yelled, ready to do something at any moment. The person didn't pay attention to her and kept walking toward the gate. Hey, you idiot, did you not hear what she said? Kiba yelled and aggressively showed his teeth. Before they could do anything, the figure's arm shot up and his fingers spread. Universal pull, Shino flew across the distance and into the figure's outstretched hand with a silent pulse of chakra, which completely surprised his team. When the figure turned around, it threw Aburame into the dark portal, and the void closed as the shinobi went inside. Shino fell out of the black cavity and landed flat on his back. The world was spinning around him, making him feel sick. As soon as he figured out where he was, he looked around and saw that he was in a seaside town, most likely wave country based on the long bridge behind him. He smiled under his collar as he confirmed that the name of the bridge was Wave Country. Shino heard a voice off to the side say, you must be one of Naruto's friends. This caught his attention. Then I guess he started his attack. Shino turned around and saw a group. A villager standing behind an old man in what looked like expensive robes. Hello, my name is Tizuna, and I'm the daimyo of Wave Country, the old man said, nodding to say hello. You can stay here as long as you want. Naruto told us to take care of anyone he sends here, and we kept our word. Thank you, Tizuna-sama. Shino replied by bowing his head. If it's okay with you, I'll wait here for the rest of my clan. I think Naruto-san will also send them here. Do what you want. I'm just helping that kid. Out, it's the... Least we could do after he saved our country, grumbled Tizuna, and the other villagers nodded in agreement. Bastard, Kiba yelled and held out her claws in anger. What did you do to him? Give him back. As the others changed into offensive positions and the gate guards came out to help, the big dog next to Kiba barked loudly, catching their attention. He looked at Kiba and barked a short message that only an Inazuka could understand. What do you mean that's Naruto? He looks totally different. Kiba yelled and his eyes were wide with surprise. When everyone at the gates heard this, they stood up straight and an ANBU squad dropped out of the shadows. Ox, tell Hokage-sama about this, said a hair-masked ANBU member as the rest of his team gathered around him. Yes, Captain, the ANBU with the Ox mask said, then vanished with a body flicker, since one of them was dead. The other members of ANBU moved in front of the other Kanoa Nin and changed positions to protect the ones behind them, Namikaze. Uzumaki Naruto, give up peacefully or we'll use force, the hair-masked ANBU officer said. As his chakra spiked to warn, Naruto laughed to himself. It's only been a little over a year, and you fools already seem to have forgotten what happened the last time I was here. Naruto sighed, and his eyes flickered over their faces. Let me remind you of something. Naruto raised his hand again and, with his index finger outstretched, made a ball of blue power glow. The ANBU rushed forward to stop the attack. But Naruto just waved his other hand and stopped him. Almighty push, the wave of invisible power sent the three masked shinobi flying back, and they crashed into the big gates of the village. As the three ANBU flew by, Kiba and Akimaru charged ahead, and Inata followed behind them. Karina disappeared with a Jinjutsu, Man Beast's ultimate Taijutsu, Fong over Fong. Kiba yelled, and he and Akimaru jumped into the air and turned into fast spinning tornadoes, same old Kiba, charging into battle. Hit first against a better opponent, Naruto let out a sigh and waved his hand again, almighty push. The two cyclones were shot apart in the middle, sending them flying to the left and right into the woods. With the fong over fong crashing through the trees and plants, Hinata charged through the gap created by Naruto's technique. Her hand, which was glowing blue, slammed into Naruto's chest, and the huge amount of chakra used in the attack exploded on contact, blowing Naruto's chest apart and 
sending blood and organs flying everywhere, Hinata laughed arrogantly as she turned around and saw the shocked faces of the gate guards and ANBU. He was a fool to think he could stand up to the Huga clan's power. As she started to walk back, she snorted, her voice full of pride. Stupid, I thought it was already over. The main Huga branch's pride never ceases to amaze me. Hinata heard something from behind her, and her eyes got very big as she turned around. A hand grabbed her throat. It was... The hand of the man she had just killed a few seconds before, she looked over Naruto's shoulder and saw how the two halves of his body shimmered and then vanished, along with his body and his spilled guts. With her Byakugan eyes glaring angrily, she put more chakra into her hands and got ready to hit him again, but all of a sudden, her body went limp, and arcs of lightning came out of Naruto's body and paralyzed her, thousand birds. Current as the others tried to save Hinata, the lightning bolts kept them back. The technique was so powerful that it dug trenches in the ground, even though it only paralyzed the girl he was holding, Naruto put his other hand over Inada's mouth and drank some of her blood and chakra, then, he threw her into a new portal without even looking at her before moving on, Hinata, Kiba, and Kurinai, who was not there, both yelled, Hinata flew out of the portal and into a wall, she hit the wall hard and fell to the floor with a loud thud, as she stumbled to her feet. She looked around and frowned. She was in a big room with no windows, and the only light seemed to come from the torches outside the prison bars across the room. She reached for a chakra to break the bars and escape, but when she did, she found that she couldn't feel it at all. Don't bother. The room is sealed so you can't use chakra to get out. You can't get out, a voice said, and its owner melted out of the shadows outside the prison. Making Hinata gasp in surprise, she whispered, Achiha. Itachi, with a pale face from fear, welcome to Amage Cure, Hugo-san, you and anyone else Naruto takes prisoner will stay here until he decides what to do with you. Itachi spoke as he moved back into the shadows and vanished again. Hinata took a blade out of her pouch and hit the prison bars as hard as she could, but she didn't even make a scratch. She sat on the floor, hunched over, and waited, you cretin. Kiba screamed again and ran at the team with red hair, his eyes red with anger, Naruto. Avoided the Inazuka's blows and Karina's attempts to catch him in a Jinjutsu. Instead, he focused on absorbing Inata's chakra and DNA, incorporating the Byakugan into his own Dojutsu. As he added the last of the three great Dojutsu, the Byakugan, his eyes started to change again, taking on a new shape. With the help of the Byakugan, his scara changed into lavender bands that were always marked by a red tomo. Two to the left and two to the right of the pupil, his iris and the pupil both went away and in their place was a pitch black diamond. As they got closer to the diamond, the bands got darker, going from a light lavender color at the edges to a darker lavender color and in the middle. As the gate guards, ANBU, and Akamaru came to help Kiba, Naruto took a familiar stance that made them all look at him with wide eyes, eight trigrams palm rotation, a thousand birds current, Naruto chanted as he turned on his heel. His body exploded into a dome of spinning, electric chakra that hit the shinobi and threw them all back into the village walls. How is that even possible? That's a Huga clan trick. Due to her illusion, Karina's voice sounded like it was coming from everywhere. You saw me take in and out of spirit. I learned not only the gentle fist style from her, but also how to use the Byakugan, Naruto replied, taking a glance at his eyes in a nearby puddle. I think I'll call them the eyes of the emperor. With the extra powers of the Byakugan, no one can hide from my sight. He wanted to see. How well his newly improved dojitsu worked, so he turned his head to look into Karina's eyes and locked eyes with her through his own skull. Using the Sharingan's powers to hypnotize her, he forced her to walk through a newly opened portal. It took more chakra to hypnotize her this way, but his large store of chakra made it hard to notice. The Byakugan is a pretty useful tool. With this addition, my eyes are now the strongest in the world. Naruto thought for a moment and then looked back at the gate the kanoa Ning were still lying on the ground and staring at him with hateful eyes the thousand birds palm rotation mix had not only thrown them back but also temporarily paralyzed them naruto raised his hand again and used the same attack he had used before this time no one could stop him hollow flash a beam of blue chakra shot out of his finger and hurtled down the road burning up kiba and the other kanoa Ning on its way to the village gates the resulting explosion blew up the Huge village gates and a big part of the walls around them, all around the village's walls, shadow clones got the signal to attack, black flames shot out of their eyes and set fire to everything they could see, waves of shadow clones rushed over the walls and into the village, where they were ready to carry out their secondary goals, Tsunade, Jiraiya, and several ANBU squads all came from different directions, drawn by the huge explosion. A few seconds passed before several Jonin and Chunin. 
joined them, they saw a redhead with closed eyes sitting in the middle of the crater where their village gates used to be. He looked bored. What's going on with Tsunade? Jiraiya asked as he looked at the huge amount of damage. Who are they? That's Naruto. Tsunade replied by thinking of the teen's most recent entry in the bingo book. The frog Sanin's eyes grew wide in shock. The boy had changed so much since they had last seen each other. Now, he looked more like his mother than his father. Worst. Of all, his eyes reminded Jiraiya of one of the orphans he had trained back in AIM, which was a bittersweet memory. Well, Jiraiya, I see you made it through our last fight. I have no doubt that Tsunade's skills saved you. Naruto said something as he stood up, and his eyes popped open. Naruto, you don't have to do this. There must be a way to get you to come back. Jiraiya yelled with a grimace on her face. Naruto's face quickly changed from one of indifference to one of pain, which surprised. Everyone, the team, asked with a choked sob. You still want me back, after everything that I've done, Tsunade smiled when she saw this, maybe there was still a small chance, of course we want you to come back, Naruto, Tsunade smiled back as the boy slowly started to sniffle and tears started to run down his face, we never stop wanting you, Naruto, and the villagers know you're not a demon, so things can be different, Naruto started to cry as he talked, and his hair covered his face as he cried, I don't believe it. His cries of pain got louder, as the rest of the Hokage Mountain and the Hokage Tower burst into flames. Naruto's sobs turned into laughs until he was laughing so hard he was cackling that you idiots would think I want to come back to this dump. Some of the ninja in the area turned around and ran into the village to find out who set off the explosions. The signal from Tsunade was the only thing that kept the rest of the ninja back. She cried out, W, why would you do this, Naruto? Tears came to the corners of her eyes because you deserved it naruto gave a snarl and his face went from being amused to looking angry did you think that if you started caring now it would make a difference your dear villagers had 13 years to figure out the truth but now that i'm a threat they want me back and see me as a person for the first time behind the angry redhead the wall of black flames grew higher and higher towering over the walls of the village no i won't forgive them again she said Naruto finished, and he took a deep breath to release all the energy he had been holding in. This town will go up in flames. Jiraiya took a step forward, giving Tsunade a moment to be alone and cry. What about the good people in the village? Naruto, there are still a lot of people who care about you or have never done anything bad to you. The Sanin yelled, and his eyes were red with anger. Are you going to kill them too? Like some kind of monster, Naruto smiled, and his eyes lit up with a newfound sense of humor of course not you underestimate me jiraiya the ninjas who were there were shocked because naruto hadn't said anything the comment had come from inside their own heads many of my skills are in my head jiraiya as we talk thousands of my clones are running wild in your village looking for innocent people to send to one of my many allies for safety naruto told them what happened and his voice rang through their minds the guilty will burn and the innocent will live once Kanoha is taken care of, I will give them a place in my new village. When Kanoha Maru, Udon, and Moegi heard a huge explosion, they turned from the training ground and saw the Okage Tower on fire. What do you think we should do? Ko, Moegi asked, his voice shaking with fear. Let's go see what it is. Kanoha Maru said with a happy tone, maybe Naruto Nizen is back. That seemed to make them feel better. And they started walking toward the village, but a voice from behind stopped them. Where are? The three of you going, when they turned around, they saw their teacher, Ebisu, it's way too dangerous for you Jinin, get out of here. Ebisu was cut off as his eyes rolled back and he fell to the ground. The three Jinin smiled wide when they saw Naruto standing behind their unconscious sensei, hey, you guys. Naruto greeted with a wave, high as she stared in shock at his compound, he had run out of his office when he heard the first explosion. But an attack from behind knocked him out, when he woke up a few minutes later. He saw the main branch members all over the garden, the rest of the branch members were nowhere to be found, like what I've done with the place, a voice to his left asked, Hayashi's head snapped to the side, and he saw a grinning Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto, the head of the Hyuga clan growled, so, you've come back, Hyuga Hayashi, Naruto replied with a sly smile, this is going to be fun for me, people were disappearing all over the village of Kanoha, some were grabbed by red-headed figures that vanished as quickly as they appeared while others fell into black portals that appeared out of nowhere the village was in complete chaos and the ninja tried but failed to get everyone into the shelters and save those who were taken naruto laughed when he saw his opponent's shocked faces do you now get it you can't act like this is just killing a monster for no reason this is a cleansing naruto yelled and the sound of his loud voice made them wince as it went through there Minds, those of you who die here today should know that you are the worst people in the world. Those of you who make it out alive will be either innocent or unlucky. Because Kanoha will fall today, many of the shinobi around them started to worry. Some of them knew where they stood with the red-headed Uzumaki, while others didn't know where they would end up. 
Naruto had completely scared off the Kana and forces by using his telepathy and a little hypnotism to help his message sink in, this made it easier to capture or kill them, what's up with your dad, you wear his name with pride, Naruto, think about what he'd want, Jiraiya yelled, trying to fight off the small amount of hypnosis, he was the best Hokage this village has ever had, would you spit on his picture like this, hell yes, Naruto yelled back and smiled widely, the only thing I respect about that man is his power, I've read his notes and I'll admit he was a genius, but that doesn't mean I'll forgive him for sacrificing me for this horrible place he took a deep breath and then felt better if you think jiraiya is proud to wear his name you don't understand him naruto went on grinning with confidence let this name be a constant reminder to you all of who i am you all say that my father is a great hero and that he saved your lives this name will remind you of how you treated his legacy and how you repaid his sacrifice jiraiya took a step back with his head down admitting defeat he knew he couldn't change the redhead's mind fine naruto if you insist on going on like this, I'll have to fight you. It's my job to protect this village, and I'll do what I have to. The Sanin said this with a hard voice and determined eyes as they talked. Tsunade regained her senses and stood up to look into Naruto's eyes, making a startling discovery. She could no longer feel the happiness and innocence of a child in those orbs. Instead, she could see his anger and rage behind the black diamonds that stared back at her. This last fact helped her make up her mind. The boy in front of her was no longer the Naruto she knew, and he didn't need her in his world anymore. You forced me to become Okage Naruto. It is my job to protect these people, and I will beat anyone who tries to hurt them, including you. She spoke in a whisper, but he could still hear her. She gave the order to attack by waving her hand. The small army behind her responded right away by firing hundreds of kunai into the air. Naruto smiled widely as the rain of metal fell on him, he was really looking forward to this, finally, the redhead said with a smirk as he raised both hands above his head and let his huge chakra pool swirl around him, almighty push, with a loud whoosh, an invisible wave of power slammed into the hail of weapons, deflecting them and sending them flying, Naruto jumped at the waves of advancing shinobi, the army of Kanoha Nin who were following Tsunade and Jiraiya, he had a big grin on his face, Jiraiya broke away from the group of shinobi and jumped onto a nearby roof, he closed his eyes and clapped his hands together as if he were praying. Naruto grinned when he felt the natural chakra flowing into the toad sage and turned his attention back to the group of people he was fighting. Jiraiya could take all the time he needed. As Naruto went down into the crowd of shinobi, he dodged several blows by moving his hands quickly around him. Blood filled the air as he ripped off limbs and cut his way through the shinobi around him, never stopping or slowing down as he blurred through them. When he stopped in the middle of the crowd, there was a trail of blood and body parts behind him. He turned over onto his hands and started spinning with his legs stretched out. His spinning got faster and faster until he looked like a small tornado of limps. The Kana and Shinobi stayed back as his power swirled around him, storm leg, severing cut. Naruto yelled, and as he did, his leg snapped out from under him, from where he stood, a circle of blue energy pulsed, cutting through the air and killing everything in its way. Many of the Kana and Shinobi were able to jump over or duck under the energy blade. Those who were unlucky or too slow were cut in half by the attack, which didn't slow down as it went through them. The survivors were shocked to see dozens of ninja, civilians, buildings, and everything else in a 50-meter radius cut in half. As soon as Naruto's spin stopped, he pushed off the ground and into the air, where he surrounded himself with the Shinobi who were falling he jumped from body to body dodging all kinds of thrown jetsu as he slashed throats and tore out hearts with his claws as they got closer to the ground he grabbed the closest shinobi's arm ripped it off with one pull and beat the ninja into the ground with an overhand swing when he hit the ground he cracked the poor shinobi's back he dodged the blow from behind spun around and put his hand up to block a second blow seeing how surprised tsunade looked he dropped his fist and hit her with one of his own, knocking her down, as she flew through the air, she hit a few shinobi and then crashed into a building, causing it to fall down around her, he jumped back up into the air and backflipped over Jiraiya's punch, Jiraiya was finally in sage mode, with his nose flattened and crooked like a toad and a circle of red eyeliner around his eyes, he landed behind the toad sage to avoid Jiraiya's next punch, but when Jiraiya turned around, the natural chakra coming from his arm, sent him flying back. He flipped over in the air and landed on his feet a few meters away from the sage. He looked at the damage he'd done with a big smile. In the first five minutes of the battle, he killed more than 50 shinobi and civilians, hurt many more, and destroyed dozens of buildings. Those shinobi who could still fight gathered around Jiraiya, where a fully healed Tsunade was standing by his side. Naruto laughed softly to himself, and his smile turned sneaky. Naruto laughed and said, 
This is so much fun, ignoring the looks he was getting, why don't we spice this up a bit, what on earth are you talking about, Naruto, Tsunade asked, keeping a wary eye on him, in response, he pulled out a kunai and threw it at Jiraiya, but the sage caught it easily, when people saw that a seal was wrapped around the small blade, their eyes widened, Jiraiya was getting ready to throw away the dangerous weapon, if I were you, I wouldn't do that, when Naruto spoke up, the Sanin stopped for a moment, take a good look at it, I promise it won't hurt you, Jiraiya went against his better judgment and got a closer look at the seal, when he saw the seal array, his eyes grew wide, this is, he whispered, staring at the red haired teen in shock, it is, yes, Naruto nodded and smiled arrogantly, even though the other shinobi were looking at him funny, Naruto started making hand seals in a slow and steady way, what is that, Jiraiya, Tsunade asked with narrowed eyes as the other ninja ran away to avoid, Whatever jutsu was coming, it's Orochimaru's control seal for his jutsu, Jiraiya replied by tightening his grip on the kunai, Tsunade turned her head so quickly toward him that he thought he heard her neck break, which jutsu, she asked in a panicked tone, but before Jiraiya could answer, Naruto finished his jutsu, summoning jutsu, in pure world resurrection as a brown coffin rose from the ground. The gathered crowd could only gulp as they wondered who Naruto had summoned, many remembering the reports about the revived Shodame and Nidame fighting against the Sandame. When the lid fell and a person stepped out of the coffin, everyone took a step back with wide open eyes. Okami no, Tsunade whispered, and her shoulders shook because she was scared. Naruto stood in the middle of the village and looked around at all the destruction and people screaming after sending Iruka, Choji, and Shikamaru to wave country. He fought his way through ninja and regular people to get to the market center too. Meet up with his other clones. As time went on, more and more clones came back to the market center to say that their mission was a success. They were waiting for the next signal from the main body. At last, the impure world resurrection signaled itself with a pulse of dark energy that spread through the village. The clones nodded to each other and then ran off in different directions, killing everyone in their way as he ran through the village, killing civilians who tried to escape and ninjas who tried to fight back. Naruto saw a fast-moving blur coming at him from behind as he put more chakra into his eyes. The blur seemed to slow down until he could see the shape of Rock Lee, a master of taijutsu, flying toward him in slow motion. Spinning around, he gave Lee a kick of his own, and as Lee was in the air, his leg hit Lee's with a loud crack. Naruto's blow went through the air and sent Lee flying backwards. Lee's opponent was completely unharmed. Naruto laughed at his new guest says, he put his leg down, on the other side of him with the rest of Team Guy, Lee, Tintin, -tin, and Guy himself, alright, Team Guy, here we are again, Naruto said hello, and his eyes met Lee's, my invitation is still open to you, Lee, you can still join me, I'm sorry, Naruto-san, but my answer is still no, your actions are very old fashioned, and I won't take part in them, Lee replied as he looked around at the mess of dead bodies, too bad, Niji was probably right, Naruto let out a sigh and hung his head. I'll have to beat you down and drag you away with me. What do you know about Niji and what have you done to him? Tintin yelled and out of nowhere, two kunai appeared in her hands. I haven't done anything to him. He joined me on his own. Naruto answered with his head turned to one side. At the end of the day, I had the one thing he had always wanted. They looked puzzled and confused at his answer, but Guy's eyes grew wider as he got it. He whispered, you broke his cursed seal, which made the other. Two people gasped, not just his branch family, but the whole Hyuga family chose to join me in exchange for having their seals broken. Naruto replied with a big grin, join me, Lee, you don't belong on that side. This village is full of corruption and evil, and they don't deserve your loyalty. I'm sorry, Naruto-san, but I have to say no again. Unlike Niji, I can't leave my team. They are good people, and I will protect them with my life. Lee yelled, which made his coach and teammate smile, Naruto's. Snarl got everyone's attention again, oh, that's right, did your kind sensei ever tell you about the time he let a mob attack a little child while he was supposed to be watching over that child, Naruto growled, making Lee's eyes widen as he looked at his teacher, guy could only hang his head in shame, or did your kind teammate tell you about the little boy she used as a target while her parents cheered her on to improve her skills, Tintin looked at the ground as Lee's eyes turned to her, proving. What the redheads had said, I didn't think so, because they are no better than the rest of this village. Lee looked back at Naruto again as he kept talking. Will you still fight for them? Lee, will you still risk your life to protect them? Are they still the kind of people you'd be willing to stick with? Lee kept looking back and forth between the people he thought he knew. He closed his eyes, shook his head, and tried to get his mind off of them. Is it true, Guy Sensei? Tintin Chan, Lee asked, his head down. Did you really do all or any of those things? Lee, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, Tintin said something stutteringly and turned away from her teammate, 
My parents made me, and every time I hit him, they were so proud. They kept saying he was a demon, but I didn't think it was wrong. Yes, Lee Kuen, it's true. Guy said this in a serious way to take the focus off of his female student. We were still sad, and I didn't want to protect the thing that killed all those people at the time. I thought Naruto was a demon. Lee made a face and walked away from them with his head hung low. I'll come with you, Naruto Kuen. I can't defend a village that treats an orphan like that. When the Taijutsu expert spoke, he did so in a sad, low voice. With a nod, Naruto opened a black cavity for Lee to go through. The teen and spandex walked through the portal, which took him to Kumo with Niji and the other Hyuga. When he turned back to the two other people on Team Guy, he smiled arrogantly at the way. They were looking at him, what should we do about you two now? Maybe it's time for some revenge. He sneered as he ran toward them. Ten Ten threw several weapons at Naruto, but he dodged them all and ran toward Guy, meeting the Jonin halfway. He blocked Guy's leaf whirlwind with his arm, then leaned back as Guy used the block to spin and attack with his other leg, trying to knock his head off his shoulders as the kick went by Naruto's head. He grabbed Guy's leg and threw him into a nearby building, where the Jonin crashed through the walls and disappeared. Tintin kept throwing kunai and shuriken at Naruto after Guy got out of the way, but the weapons just bounced off his skin without leaving a mark. It's sad that you can't even hurt a simple clone. Do you really think you can beat the real me with these skills? Tintin's eyes got big when Naruto sneered and said that they were fighting a clone as she thought about the rest of what he said. She became angry, the way he made fun of. Her skills was very upsetting. She pulled out a pair of scrolls and set them down as they exploded in smoke. The two scrolls shot into the air and spun around as Tintin jumped up between them, twin rising dragons. Tintin yelled, and as she did, her hands began to flicker over the scrolls as she began to open them and throw hundreds of weapons at the ground. Her eyes got really big when Naruto took a position she had seen him take dozens of times before eight trigrams palms rotation. Naruto yelled and turned on his heel, Guy, who had just gotten up, and Tintin, who was coming down. Both watched in shock as a dome of chakra formed around Naruto, deflecting the rain of weapons and making a hole in the ground. Tintin landed in a crouch and took a second to get her bearings before she stood up. She stared at him and asked, What the hell? Where did you learn that? That's my dirty little secret. Naruto smiled in response. Tintin jumped into the air again, growling angrily as her fingers twitched and moved the ninja wire on her weapons. With a pull, the different weapons were lifted off the ground and thrown back at Naruto, eight trigrams palms rotation, Naruto yelled again, spun on his heel, and pushed the weapons away again as the weapons hit the chakra shield and bounced back. A second shout came from inside the dome, thousand birds, current arcs of electricity hit the different weapons, and the electricity flowed up the wire toward Tintin. Tintin had to cut the wire and fall to the ground because of this, as Naruto's spin came to an end, she pulled out another scroll and opened it she yelled exploding dragon strike as her chakra poured into the scroll she was holding with a puff of smoke a dragon made of fire flew out of the seal and hit it straight for naruto its mouth was wide and its flames were bright when the dragon hit the redhead in the chest it exploded in a bright flash of fire that blew them all back and destroyed the street they were standing on naruto went flying with a loud whoosh and a crash only hitting a stone wall stopped his Flight, Tintin, and Guy got up from the ground and looked at the broken wall. All they saw was a pile of rubble, and there was no sign of Naruto. Guy heaved a sigh of relief and walked over to Tintin. He put his hand on her shoulder. Come, Tintin, we need to go see Hokage-sama and help in any way we can. Guy said something and pulled his student away. As they turned to leave, the pile of rubble exploded outwards, revealing an unharmed Naruto holding a small ball of glowing blue energy in one hand. When Guy saw that the team was holding a ball of energy, he dropped his weights and ran towards Naruto, turning into a green blur as he went. Naruto said, Death Ball, and threw the ball right past Guy and at Tintin, who was still healing from her last attack. Guy turned on his heel and ran toward Tintin as fast as he could, hoping to get there in time to protect her from the technique. Tintin knew her sensei wouldn't be able to get to her in time, so she pulled out another scroll and poured her chakra into the seal when the seal was broken a puff of chakra covered her body summoning technique iron protection wall her voice rang out from within the smoke cloud as the smoke cleared naruto saw that tintin was now protected by a large metal dome one that had appeared just in time to shield her from the energy orb the death ball struck the dome and exploded the small sphere creating a massive explosion that created the ground and knocked guy right off his feet as the dust from the Explosion cleared, Tintin could be seen lying unconscious in the center of the large crater. The melted remains of her metal dome pooled at her feet, 
leaping to his feet and rushing towards the injured form of his last remaining student, Guy knew he was going to be too late. She was already sinking into one of Naruto's dark portals, Tintin, -ten, having been fully focused on his student. Guy was unable to avoid the blow to his back from Naruto, who stood crouched on the Jonin's back with two fingers. Jabbed into the man's shoulder blades, finger gun, twin bullet, Naruto whispered, twisting his fingers deeper into the man's back. Guy kept running toward his student, despite the extra weight and injuries, trying to save her at any cost. When he got to the portal at the last second, he grabbed her leg and pulled, grimacing in pain because he was having to use his hurt arms. He let go and watched as Tintin -ten was pulled into the portal after receiving an electric shock from the Naruto clone, which caused his nerves to twitch. The Jonin fell to his knees with tears coming out of his eyes as the portal closed and his student went through it. Guy, what's wrong? You already left one child to a cruel fate, so I was sure you could do it again. Naruto teased him, jumped over him, and landed on his knees in front of him. Guy's sad face changed to one of anger. His normally kind face was burning with uncontrolled rage, and the area around him was thick with his desire to kill before the Taijutsu. Master could answer or attack. Naruto crossed the short distance between them and bit his throat with his sharp, serrated teeth. Before the Jonin could do more than open his eyes, Naruto pulled back and tore out his throat. Blood poured from the wound and covered his body. He stood up and took a step away from the dying Jonin. He wiped the blood from his mouth and scoffed as he looked into the man's eyes, which were cloudy. The redhead laughed and said, Poor thing. He then turned away and ran. Through the streets to find his next victim, Uchiha Sasuke lay on the operating table in the emergency room of Kanoha, his broken mind still stuck in the endless pain Naruto had put him in. He was surrounded by doctors who were all trying to save his life, but he couldn't tell them about Naruto's plan. He tried to explain it many times, but all he could say was pain-filled mutterings that the medical team just didn't pay any attention to. One of the medics looked down at the Uchiha's form and asked, hey, What's that? When the other medics looked where he was pointing, they saw a small red light blinking inside the Uchiha's stomach, which hadn't been there before. Sasuke's eyes got bigger as he tried harder to warn them and tell them to get it out, but it was too late, way too late. When the attack started, Ino and Sakura were on their way to the hospital with a bouquet of flowers for their one true love. Even though they were told to help the civilians, the two girls ran straight to the hospital in hopes of impressing the handsome Uchiha by protecting him during the attack. They were only a block away when the bomb in Uchiha Sasuke's stomach went off, destroying the hospital in a loud and fiery explosion. Both girls yelled, Sasuke Kuen, as they ran as fast as they could toward the destroyed hospital. As Ino turned a corner, Sakura ran into someone and fell flat on her back. Both girls stared in fear at the grin on Uzumaki Naruto's face when he saw where the two Kunoichi were. Going, the redhead chirped, Sup? Bubblegum, his smile grew wider. Ah, uh, you're going to see your beloved Uchiha. Why should I be surprised? Well, that's too bad. After what I did to him, you won't even be able to find any pieces to recover. Naruto, Sakura yelled and lunged at him. Her fear went away as her anger took over. Naruto easily dodged her punch and hit her in the face with a backhand. Sending the pinkette flying into a faraway fruit stand, the redhead rolled his eyes and said, Bitch, please. He walked over, grabbed Sakura by the arm, and threw her through a portal. Then he looked at Eno, who was shaking. Where did you tell her to go? Eno stumbled and took a step back out of fear. Naruto's smile came back. I'll tell you where she isn't, he said with a wide grin, safe. With that, he disappeared and then appeared behind the blonde. In an instant, he knocked her out and dumped her in another portal. Sakura woke up when she felt the wind on her face. Her eyes popped open and widened, and a loud scream came from her throat. She was thousands of feet above the ground and was falling quickly toward the ground, or at least a big fluffy bed. She couldn't believe it when she saw a bed. Wait, a bed? She asked. Ha, ah, Naruto, you idiot. This is clearly a Jinjutsu. She closed her eyes, put her hands together, and flared her chakra, pushing the foreign chakra out of her body, released when the illusion broke. She smiled and opened her eyes, only to see that she was still falling and that the big bed had turned into a volcano before they suddenly stopped. Her screams could be heard for miles around, hiss, plop, the Naruto clone on the edge of the volcano smiled and almost squealed with joy as Sakura's flailing body caught fire, her skin melting away, and her bones turned to ash. With its dojitsu, the clone made sure to record every second of her face showing pain and fear, then... It sent the memory of that moment to its brothers, all over Kanoha, Naruto, and his many clones stopped what? They were doing and smiled calmly, which shocked their enemies very much, they then went... Back to fighting, Kakashi dodged another ball of lightning and blew a fireball at his opponent. Even though he knew his main element wouldn't help him in this fight, he had been fighting a Naruto clone for the last five minutes, 
and it had been a long five minutes. Their fight had destroyed much of the area around them, but neither of them had fallen. Kakashi had just barely been able to avoid every attack that Naruto's clone sent his way, while Naruto simply deflected Kakashi's attacks like, they were nothing, how can a copy be so strong, it's crazy, the copy Nin said as he jumped away from an earthen spike, using his sharing gun from the beginning of the battle, he knew that his opponent was just a simple shadow clone, he had expected to easily defeat the clone and move on, but nothing he did seemed to bother it, his weapons couldn't cut through its skin, and all of his jutsu were just pushed away, I only have one move left, it will drain me, but it's my only option, I need to get to. The gates and help stop the real Naruto, he dodged the lightning bolt and waited for the right time to use his ace in the hole, his Sharingan I changed into a new shape as he waited, after dodging another three attacks, Kakashi raised an eyebrow when his opponent seemed to stop and smile calmly, what the hell was going on, he didn't want to waste a free chance, so he shrugged and used a lot of his remaining chakra to turn on his Mangekyo Sharingan, authority of the gods, the clone's chest seemed to change shape as a vortex formed, pulling it apart and making it disappear. After the powerful move, Kakashi fell to his knees because he was too tired to move. He reached into his bag and pulled out a chakra pill, but before he could take it, a foot came at him and kicked it out of his hand. Kakashi's head snapped up and his eyes widened as another Naruto clone appeared next to him and put a hand on his shoulder. An arc of electricity went through the Jonin's body, cutting off his nerves and paralyzing him. Kakashi fell to the ground, powerless and at the clone's mercy as he laughed, I have to say, Kakashi, it's kind of funny that you only get to do your job as a sensei at the end of your life. Naruto scowled and got on his knees. I thought I'd have to beat Madara to get the last Mangekyo ability, but here you are, willing to just give it to me. For that, I'll make sure you die quickly, sensei. Kakashi's last sight was of Naruto's clawed hand reaching for his face. There was a flash of pain in his right eye, then nothing. Kanoa's gates minutes ago, oh Kami no, Tsunade whispered, her shoulders shaking in fear, the resurrected person stepped out of the broken coffin and looked around, with narrowed eyes, they took in the sight of the broken and burning village, the figure could feel the control seals tied to the resurrection technique, so it followed the signal to the kunai with the control seals on it, it smiled when it saw who was holding the kunai, you must be getting, pretty old, sensei, if you need to bring me back from the dead to help you out, the resurrected shinobi laughed as he looked at the faces of the stunned shinobi, Jiraiya just gaped, his eyes wide with surprise and shock, Minato, stammered the Sanin, whose heart was beating all over the place, Namake's Minato, resurrected Okage and Kanoha's yellow flash, continued to smile cheerfully, with Naruto, stay still you filthy little cretin, Hyuga Hayashi shouted, his hands lashing out in a blur of, movement why should i naruto smiled and dodged the man's attacks with ease you might need to move faster old man damn boy i should have done this a long time ago hayashi snarled and his fingers flared with angry chakra when i get my hands on you i'll make you suffer for this injustice naruto's smile went away right away and a deep frown took its place this reminds me of why i'm here tell me hayashi why do you hate me naruto asked as he pushed away a powerful palm thrust that used a lot of chakra, at first, I thought it might be because I was a Jinchuriki, but then I thought that someone with the Byakugan would be able to tell the difference between my chakra and my tenants, so, I'll ask Hyuga again, why do you hate me so much, Hayashi's only response was a new set of blows, which Naruto continued to avoid with ease, you're right, boy, I knew you weren't the demon because the Byakugan made that clear right away, when Hayashi finally spoke up, he stepped back and took a defensive stance, I didn't hate you for what you did, I hated you because of who you are and because of who your father was, unlike the fools in this village, I could tell at a glance that you were that man's child, you don't like me because of my father, Naruto asked, raising an eyebrow in surprise, I thought you shinobi from Kanoho were so proud of your darling Yandame that made Hayashi angry, and he made a disgusted sneering face, what most people seem to forget is that I, Orochimaru, and Fugaku Uchiha all ran for Yandame Okage, Hayashi answered, and the veins around his Byakugan started to twitch in a mad way. The title should have gone to a Hyuga elite like me, but it went to that bumbling fool instead, so it was because of jealousy, Naruto asked with a furrowed brow and narrowed eyes, were you angry that my father became Okage instead of you, I was one of the strongest shinobi in the village, the most powerful Hyuga in three generations, and the leader of one of the village's oldest and strongest clans, Hayashi snarled, and his fingers flared with angry chakra, I should have been Okage, but it was taken from me and given to a clanless orphan with a few cool tricks, Naruto's face changed into a snarl of anger, you hated me because I was his son and you weren't made Okage, the redhead yelled, his chakra flaring in anger, you took away my first true friend just because you were jealous of my father, Hayashi's eyes got very big as he was shocked, did you think I 
wouldn't remember Hyuga, then I wouldn't remember what happened, Hinata gave me the best birthday I've ever had, Naruto asked, his fists clenched in anger, she was kind to me that day, she gave me my first birthday present, and you punished her for it, you beat her in front of me, tortured her, and turned her into the selfish, cruel, arrogant Hyuga she is today, Hayashi frowned at that, and his body changed to look more aggressive, no Hayashi, I didn't forget, Naruto went on, and blue chakra began to swirl around his body, you took away my friend, made her hate me, and made her like you and the rest of your horrible main family, I'll make you pay for that, and I'll beat you up by letting out just a little bit of his killing intent and spiritual pressure, the redhead brought the Hyuga clan to its knees with a huge and frightening force, what's going on, this stress is just like when he was here before, Hayashi gasped and grabbed his chest as it pounded, I need to get away from this, boy, I need to escape, I need to run, I, as Hayashi's mind slowly broke down from the fear and pressure, Naruto drew his sword and walked up to the man, who was almost unconscious, with his blade raised and ready to cut off the Hyuga's head, eight trigram sixty-four palms, chakra-coated fingers struck Naruto all over his back, his attacker sliding around him and attacking his front, closing his chakra points and shredding organs with each blow, as a powerful palm strike sent him flying toward the courtyard wall, Naruto saw the angry face of his attacker, Hyuga Hanabi, as the redhead went under the broken courtyard wall, Hanabi got down on her knees to check on her father, she used her hands to feel for a pulse while her Byakugan looked inside him, even though he wasn't hurt at all, he just laid there and mumbled about running away and getting away from something a few seconds later. While Hanabi was looking at her father's form, a fast-moving blur appeared in front of her and kicked her making her fall backwards. Now, Hanabi-chan, didn't your mother ever tell you it's rude to attack someone from behind? Asked the smiling Naruto, who wasn't hurt. How, how are you still standing? Asked the young Yuga, who was standing on wobbly legs. You're a copy, and the first hit should have gotten rid of you. Naruto laughed at that, and he wondered how she knew he was just a clone, but Hayashi hadn't. You're right, little Yuga. That hit would have gotten rid of me if it had actually hit me. Naruto laughed to himself as he replied, The gentle fist is a strong style, but it has a lot of problems, especially from my point of view. Hanabi just gave him a glare, most likely because he was making fun of her clan style. She was still interested, so she asked, What flaws? Well, for starters, there's my steel skin technique. I'm sure if you concentrate with your eyes, you'll be able to see it. Naruto answered by holding up an arm so that she could look at it. Hanabi felt her eyes get stronger. As she put more chakra into them until she saw what she was looking for, a layer of glowing white light just above the redhead's skin, she asked, what is that? As Byakugan focused on the glowing aura and looked at it, like I've said, this is my steel skin technique, Naruto answered by putting his arm down next to his side, it doesn't do much for the real me, but it works great for my clones, it gives them a layer of solid spiritual energy that protects them from all kinds of harm, you're gentle. Fist strikes won't even touch my skin, let alone my chakra points. Any chakra you use on me will just bounce off. Hanabi's eyes grew wide as he finished talking. Such a technique would make the gentle fist style completely useless. She didn't believe in such a thing, so she crammed as much chakra as she could into her hands and ran at him while yelling. A chakra-covered palm slammed into the redhead's chest, and seconds later, a second palm did the same thing, to no effect. Hanabi was shocked too. See that the clone didn't even flinch when she hit him. Instead, her chakra just rolled off his chest and into the air, leaving him unharmed. She gulped as she looked up into his face and saw him smirk. The pride and arrogance of a Hyuga had been in her eyes, but now they were filled with fear. You're a spitfire, aren't you? Naruto laughed and leaned closer. Hanabi tried to get away, but she couldn't move. All she could do was stare at the redhead's eyes as they started to spin and the hypnotic. Movements kept pulling her in. When Hanabi woke up, she was still standing in the same place with her arms around the redhead's neck and her lips against his, she was kissing him, and of course she liked it, since he was her master, Naruto pulled away from the brunette and grinned when he saw how happy she looked, it had taken a lot more time and energy than it should have, but his first attempt to change someone's mind worked, as far as little Anabi knew, she had always loved and obeyed him, she would do anything he asked, anything to make him happy, and she would be happy there whole time, he had been looking for a chance to try out this technique, and Hanabi gave him the perfect chance, she was strong-willed, so he could see how well it worked on her, her good looks may have also helped, at its most basic, the technique involved destroying parts of a person's mind and replacing them with what he wanted, this was a way of rewriting the person's very being, in Hanabi's case, he had pulled her loyalty to her clan apart and put it in its place, her love for her family was, now love for him, 
and her devotion to her village was now devotion to him. Basically, Anabi Hugo was now his slave in body and mind. Naruto gave the girl a smug grin and sent her through a portal to one of his hiding places. He watched as she walked through the portal on her own, turning back to Hayashi, who was still talking. He pulled out his sword again and cut off the head of the Hugo Patriarch as he walked by. He then went from body to body, killing or capturing the rest of the Hugo. Main house, Jiraiya and the rest of the Kanoha Nin kept staring in shock at their Yande Mokage's resurrected body. The blonde man just grinned back, his eyes showing a bit of confusion. Minato, how can this be? Jiraiya whispered, and his voice carried across the silent battlefield. How are you called from inside the Shinigami? That shouldn't be possible. I'm just as surprised as you are. The blonde said with a sheepish scratch of the head, one second I'm in the Shinigami stomach, and the... Next thing I know, I'm standing here and staring at you. He stopped and turned his head to the side. Why on earth am I all the way over here? Minato looked around at the other shinobi and asked, Didn't you summon me, sensei? I called you because he didn't. Minato turned around when he heard a voice from behind him. He looked around the empty coffin with wide eyes as he took on the shape of his summoner. He whispered, Naruto. With a shocked look on his face, Minato's son looked nothing like what he thought he would. But he could still see some of his and Kushina's features in the teen's face, more of Kushina's than of his Hello, Dad, Naruto spoke, putting as much poison and hate into his words as he could. What's going on over here? Minato asked this with wide eyes and a pale face. What did you do to call me? Why are you coming after our town? Naruto snarled at the man and spat at his feet, his angry face twisting. Do you know what your beautiful village has done to me? Do you know how they treated me after you put the QB in my stomach? He yelled. Giving the blonde man a hateful look, Minato looked over at the Kanahan group, but none of them would look at him. This told him a lot about how bad things might have been. No, you don't. How about I tell you about my godparents as a start? Naruto rolled his eyes as he looked at the Kanahan shinobi. Your sensei over there decided he didn't want to be responsible for a child and didn't want me to get in the way of his research, so he just left me here and didn't come to see me or check on me. I didn't even meet him until my first tuning exam. Minato looked at Jiraiya with disappointment on his face and anger in his eyes. This was the man he had once thought of as his father. Jiraiya tried to explain himself, but Naruto just kept going. Then there's Tsunade, who, unlike Jiraiya, had a kind of good reason for leaving me. She was still upset about the deaths of her brother and lover, as well as her best friend, my mother, Naruto. Spoke staring at said woman, even though she had 13 years to get over it and deal with her problems, she never came back to see me, instead, she kept drinking and gambling her way across the country, ignoring her many responsibilities, Tsunade hung her head in shame and tried to avoid Minato's piercing eyes as much as she could, while one blonde Kage glared at the other, Naruto looked at the damage his clones were doing to the village, so far, everything was fine, finally, there are the people, you died for, the ones you and I gave our lives to protect, do you know how they've paid you back for what you did for them? When Naruto turned back to the group of shinobi, he asked, they thought I was the demon I was keeping at bay, so they got mad at me, the one who saved them, they insulted me, starved me, beat me, didn't pay attention to me, stopped me from learning and growing, and did everything they could to take away my humanity. The redhead stopped and took a deep breath to calm himself down, then, father, he said next, his voice steady and calm, do you really need to ask me why I'm standing on this side of the battlefield? Minato didn't say anything when he heard how the people he trusted, the people he protected and gave his life for, had treated his son. It almost broke his heart. He could only stand there with his head down and tears running down his cheeks. Naruto laughed at that and hit the resurrected Kaguya with a powerful mule kick. The Kaguya's body went flying across the battlefield and into Jiraiya's arms. Quit your crying. It's pathetic. Naruto sneered, pushed the broken coffin out of the way and took a step forward. Okay, Jiraiya, put the seal in so we can start. Jiraiya looked at Naruto after he had helped his old student stand up straight. He still wanted to apologize to the boy and beg for his forgiveness, but he knew that wouldn't work because Naruto had turned his back on them. Naruto, this won't work. I didn't call him, so I can't bind him. With the kunai, Jiraiya answered by looking at the sealed kunai in his hand. Just do it. The seal has changed so you can use it. Naruto argued back and rolled his eyes. Jiraiya said, yes, he had seen something different about the seal, but he couldn't say what it was. Still, it wasn't clear why Naruto wanted him to use the seal. Was he so full of himself that he thought he could beat Kanoha and the Yande Mokage by himself? Jiraiya didn't think the old Naruto would have done it, but she could. 
See the new Naruto doing it. The teen had already challenged many great villages on his own, so why wouldn't he do it now? The Toad Sanin put the seal on the newly resurrected Kage with a determined face. He didn't notice Naruto's small smile as the sealed kunai was being put into his head. Minato decided to plead with his son again, hoping there was still a small chance. You don't have to do this, Naruto. I know the villagers haven't treated you the way they should have, but it's not too late. You can still be the better person, Minato begged, and as the resurrection technique was finished, his cracked skin started to heal, forgive them, protect them, and show them who you really are, and they will come to accept you, Naruto pretended to think about it for one second before laughing out loud with his head thrown back and his eyes shut tight, he laughed for about a minute before he stopped, when he looked back at the Yandame, his eyes were shining with amusement, excuse them, guard them i guess i was wrong about you being a fool naruto laughed as he felt the last part of the seal go off his eyes were shining that makes what i'm going to do next so much better he had lied about the seal jiraiya was using even though it was different from the original he had lied about what was different normally only the person who made the seal could use it since it was tied to the chakra and blood however he was able to get around this by using jiraiya's chakra and body too make the seal which made it recognize the sanin as the summoner the real difference was a trap in the seal that only went off when the resurrection technique was complete as soon as the trap part of the seal went into effect minato's eyes got cloudy and a pitch black aura wrapped around his whole body in an instant the aura jumped from the yandame's body to jiraiya's and surrounded him for a few seconds before disappearing what in the hell was that jiraiya shouted and put his hand on his chest in worry kukukukuku naruto laughed which made them forget about the worried Sanin. I can't believe you did it. That's so funny. What the heck did you do to them? Naruto. Tsunade yelled and gave the redhead a dark look. When Naruto's laughter stopped, he gave her a funny look in return. Tell me, Tsunade, the teen said with a smile on his face. Did you know that it's almost impossible to call a soul from the Shinigami stomach? All eyes turned to Minato and Jiraiya, who both nodded to. Show they were aware. When asked how Minato had been called, the two just shrugged. Then tell me how you called Minato. Tsunade asked as everyone turned back to look at Naruto's shape, if I do say so myself, it was pretty easy, Naruto said, yes, and he seemed proud of himself, if I tried to free the QB or use too much of its chakra, the Yandame would appear in the seal and stop me, she said, Minato nodded to show that he agreed with this, this would have worked too when I broke the seal, but my spiritual power was strong enough to overpower and hold the soul fragment until I found a use for it. Naruto kept talking despite the horrified look on Minato's face when he heard the demon was free. Using this part of his soul as an anchor in the jutsu, I was able to pull the rest from the Shinigami stomach, which made the technique work when it wouldn't have before, even though he was their enemy. Jiraiya couldn't deny how smart the move was, not many shinobi would have been able to take advantage of such a weakness as for what happened just now naruto stopped talking grinning wide at the looks of irritation he got it would be stupid to just steal from a shinigami and hope to get away with it so i took some precautions i gave the jutsu a special seal it's basically a reworked version of the dead demon consuming seal and it binds the summoned and the person who called it together once the impure world resurrection is released the seal will drag both my darling father and jiraiya into the shinigami's belly for the rest of eternity Appeasing the death god, the redhead smile got bigger as everyone turned pale, the shinobi heard what he said, and then everyone's faces turned angry, but that's not all that it does, Naruto went on, his voice excited, there's a second seal hidden inside the first one, it's a space-time seal that will move the target out of phase, making it invisible and impossible to touch on this plane, Jiraiya's eyes got bigger as he reached out, and his jaw dropped when his hand went right through the form of his former student, father, this is your last punishment, Naruto yelled, and his smile turned wild, you will have to watch as the village you chose over me burns and its people die, unable to touch anything, help anyone, or even leave this place, Minato screamed in pain and ran toward the form of his son, Naruto just laughed as he ran through the man's form and jumped into the crowd of shinobi, killing Jonin and Chunin left and right as he fought with more ferocity than before, three clones. With red hair landed quietly at a crossroads in Kanoha's clan sector, they had just finished taking care of the clans that had caused their creator a lot of trouble, and the only people they were missing were the few who lived in the main village as they were getting ready to go to the village. They found themselves frozen in place, unable to fully control their bodies. The clan heads of the Inazuka, Nara, Yamanaka, and the Kimichi clans could be seen when their necks were forced to turn to the side. Well, 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 all three clones said at the same time, which scared their captors a lot, 
Inazuka Tsum, Nara Shikaku, Yamanaka Enochi, and Akimichi Choza, just the four we were looking for. We can tell by the way you look that you've been to your clan's compound. Did you not like what we did with the place, quiet boy? Where are you? For real, Tsum yelled, and her dog partner, Karamaru, barked from next to her. You have to pay for killing out clan members. You don't agree. The three. Clones looked at each other with a frown and kept talking in unison. In the end, we were just giving back. What do you mean by returning the favor? Shikaku asked, his eyes getting smaller as he thought. Do you think you'll really get away with this? Yes, we do, the clone said in cocky and smug tones. This is payback for all the times you beat me up when we were kids, they said. The eyes of the clan leaders grew wide with shock. You thought that we wouldn't remember, the clone snarled, and there. Angry faces scrunched up. You thought that if you had Inochi wipe our memories after each time you attacked us, we wouldn't remember. You'd be surprised at how many members of your clans did the same thing, attacking an innocent child and wiping his memory of what happened. It must have been a game for you people. To the surprise of the four clan heads, all three clones turned around to face them and broke free from Shikaku's grip. Didn't you notice how the people in your clan died? They all died. The same way you four tried to kill me, the clones talked and took a step forward, and Azuka was clawed and torn apart. Nara was forced to cut their own throats, Yamanaka was driven crazy and their minds were shattered, and Akimichi was flattened and crushed. It was the perfect revenge. When the teenager said something that made some angry, she yelled and lunged forward, and her partner followed a second later. She didn't pay attention to her teammates' screams as she and Karamaru jumped into the air and turned into two raging cyclones, Man Beast's ultimate taijutsu, Fong over Fong, as the twin cyclones got closer. Two of the clones jumped away. But the third stayed put and smirked. The two twisters hit the clone with a loud crash, grinding and slicing into the redhead. Surprisingly, the clone didn't go away when it hit the ground, which shocked the shinobi who was watching. In fact, the clone seemed to still exist as it was sent sliding back with its hands outstretched and holding the two cyclones back. Before Naruto pushed down with a flick of his wrist, the three of them stood still for a split second. The small redhead was able to hold back the two huge cyclones. Son and Karamaru were slammed hard into the ground right away, and the force of the impact broke their technique and the ground below. Choza and Shikaku ran to help their friend when they saw her fall, but they were much too slow. In an instant, two more clones appeared behind Inazuka as he was getting up. There. Clawed hands cut through the air and cut off both of their heads. Choza turned into a big, fleshy ball and rolled toward the three teens while yelling in anger. He wanted to crush and flatten them under his weight. When one of the clones saw this, it ran towards the big ball and leaped into the air, getting ready to kick hard. The force of the blow sent the Akimichi flying. The huge orb flew across the village and landed in the middle of the black flames. Choza's legs and arms broke when he hit the ground, and he could only scream in pain as he slowly burned to death. Choza, Shikaku yelled and his normally blank face turned red and horrified. Shikaku turned his angry gaze back to the clone that had killed his teammate. He made a seal and spiked his chakra, which made every shadow in the area ripple. The sky turned dark as hundreds of black spikes shot out of the shadows. All of them seemed to lock onto the clone's shape before speeding towards the ground. The clone just looked back at the Nara head with a smug smile as the spikes bounced off its steel skin and turned into a dark mist. Shadow, eh, I guess it's impressive, the clone said with a laugh as the last spikes fell away. I wonder how your shadows compare to real darkness before the Nara could react. Naruto swung his arm forward, and an aura of pitch black darkness appeared around him. Liberation, Shikaku's eyes grew wider as a wall of blackness rose from the ground. The technique was similar to one of the Nara's. Techniques, Shikaku looked at the dark wall and thought, why would he raise a shield? The Nara was completely surprised when a literal cloud of debris exploded from the wall. Wood and stone flew through the air and crashed into him, crushing him under a literal mountain of debris. If you looked closely, you would see dozens of arms, legs, and other bloody body parts in the pile of wreckage. Not much better than the rest of your clan, it seems. The redhead scoffed, turning away from the Nara clan. And their compound, the clone raised an eyebrow as he walked toward the shapes of his clone brothers. He saw that they were standing over the dead body of Inochi Yamanaka. He got their attention by asking, what happened to him? Both clones looked at each other, then turned back to him and replied at the same time, he tried to control us with a clan jetsu. The other two said as they kicked the body, we pushed it away, broke down his defenses, and broke his mind. The single clone looked back at him for a moment, then shook. Wow, that's weird. Naruto looked at the damage he had done as he stood in a field of blood and body parts. Almost all of the ANBU and Shinobi who had attacked him were dead. His claws and Jetsu had literally torn them apart and shredded them. On the other side of him stood the only three people who were skilled enough to survive his first rampage, Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Saratobi Asuma. He had spent the last few minutes trying to get away from the three by running in. 
circles around them and killing everyone else while they watched helplessly. The Yande Mokage was standing off to the side. The blonde Kage was on his knees, crying as he watched his village get killed. Unfortunately for Kanoa, the last of his clones just disappeared, telling him that the rest of the village was either dead, captured, or safe with one of his allies. In less than an hour, the village of about 15,000 people was down to only three people, not even an army of shinobi could have done the same thing well you three look like the last one standing naruto laughed and looked at the angry shinobi anything else to say this naruto will send you to hell asuma yelled when naruto told him what had happened to kurinai he was furious and now the jounin wanted to kill him more than anything that may be so naruto agreed slipping into his sixth style stance but it can't be any worse than living in this village was with that he attacked several miles from the village madara stood with his head turned to the side and looked at the wall of fire that stopped him from getting to the village he was looking around amage cure for the namake's brat when he felt a big release of chakra from fire country this was quite a feat given how far away the two places were from each other he went right over to find out what was going on but the familiar looking flames were blocking the way what happened itachi is still hiding in amage cure and the last time i checked sasuke still didn't have the mangekyo could there be another uchiha around madara thought and his one Sharingan shone from behind his mask. This could be my last chance. Since Itachi is hiding and Sasuke is missing, this body is almost at its limit, and Uchiha with an awakened Mangekyo would make an excellent host. Madara laughed to himself and disappeared into a vortex originating from his revealed eye minutes ago. Minato was amazed as his son continued to destroy the hidden leaf forces he had learned a while ago that he could not only feel the life force of everyone around him, but also see their spirits as they died. When someone died, a white, glowing version of them would fly out of their body and into the sky all around the village he could feel as several lives ended one after the other as Minato turned his attention back to the battle he could only feel for people still alive in the village Jiraiya and Tsunade had small amounts of life force left which he thought was because they were old Asuma had more life force than Jiraiya and Tsunade put together all around them were the dead bodies of their friends all of whom had been killed by the man standing across from them Minato shivered every time he tried to gauge Naruto's life force he had expected it to be as high as Asuma's maybe a little higher due to the age difference but what he could sense was incredible no one in the village even came close to the amount of life force within Naruto's body it felt like an endless pool in fact he was sure that even the life force of all the people in Kanoa combined didn't even come close to the amount Naruto radiated. What happened to you, Naruto? How did you get so strong? He asked. As he watched Naruto rush at the last of the Kanoa Nin, Minato felt conflicted. On the one hand, he was angry at Naruto for destroying their village. He was also disappointed that Naruto would choose revenge over forgiving the people of Kanoa. On the other hand, he felt regret for thinking that the people would see Naruto as a hero as Minato was thinking. Something hit him in the back and sent him flying into the pile of rubble behind him. When he turned around, he saw the broken and lifeless body of Asuma Saratobi. His head hung limp to the side, attached to his neck by a flap of skin. His torso and limbs were covered in claw marks, and his chest was caved in, probably from the blow that sent him flying, in each hand. He held the bottom half of his trademark he found Tsunade kneeling off to the side with one hand holding a bleeding wound in her stomach from where he was standing he could see that the wound went through her front and out her back she was also covered in scratches and one arm looked like it was broken before Minato could count her out of the fight he saw patterns cover her body before all her wounds steamed shut he thought it was that seal he had helped her develop Tsunade stood up and who did it then it takes years of study to learn how to move the chakra to Control the hairs because they are made of dead tissue. Minato thought about how Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Naruto were fighting with Jutsu. Jiraiya and Tsunade were throwing elemental attacks at Naruto, but he was blocking them and fighting back with sealless Jutsu that Minato had never seen before. After a few minutes, Tsunade got angry, and when her seal broke, she had to use her last chakra on one last attack. Summoning Jutsu as the smoke cleared, Minato saw Tsunade standing on top of the slug. Queen Katsuyu's head, before anyone could react, the slug spewed a flood of acid at Naruto, and another flood followed as he jumped into the air. He had no way to avoid the incoming flood of acid in the air and no time to Kawarimi. Minato thought Naruto was dead, so he shut his eyes to avoid seeing his son melt. Instead of the sound of acid hitting flesh or Naruto's screams of pain, Minato heard something else. What was that? It sounded like static, he asked. When he opened his eyes, he saw that. Naruto was no longer in the acid or even close to it. Instead, he was standing a few yards away and about to punch the front of the slug. How did he get there so quickly? Were they the Hiroshin? I don't see any kunai. 
and what was that noise that sounded like static? Minato was curious, Jiraiya had warned Tsunade, so she jumped off the slug's head and landed next to the toad sage, when Naruto punched the slug. Instead of flying back or disappearing, the slug broke into hundreds of smaller slugs. That fell on Naruto. This time, Minato was able to see Naruto use the sonido, what did you say? One second, he's about to get hit by slugs, and the next, he's standing meters away and he didn't use any chakra, that kind of speed shouldn't be possible. Minato thought that Naruto's skills were getting more and more impressive as the slugs were formed behind Tsunade. Tsunade jumped on her summoning head to talk to Katsuyu while holding up his blade. When Naruto saw that he had cut his hand, he ran. His hand along the edge of the blade, Jiraiya did the same thing and used the same technique as Gamabunta appeared. Minato looked at Naruto to see what he would summon. Instead, Naruto held his bleeding hand above his head, and a ball of white energy started to form. The ball grew until it was as big as Naruto, and from the front, it looked like a big circular saw. He pulled back, aimed it at the two summons who were getting ready to dodge, and then threw it forward, Grand Ray Zero threw the ball at them faster than any of them could follow it. It was spinning like a razor, and it was so fast that it compressed and decompressed several times. One moment, the summons were about to avoid whatever was coming, and the next, they were back in their realm, hurt and not sure what had happened. Minato gaped at the sheer speed and raw power of the attack. It had disappeared less than a second after it was launched leaving nothing but a long deep trench starting from Naruto's position. The trench at its shallowest point was two feet deep. 12 feet at its deepest, it extended from Naruto's position at the front gate across the village destroying all in its path and out the other end, it was even powerful enough to extinguish the Amaterasu flames from where it passed, he has so much power, and he doesn't even look tired, this is crazy, Naruto, how strong are you, Minato thought, and when he heard Jiraiya moan, he saw her half buried under a pile of rubble, across from him, on the other side of the trench, was Tsunade, or at least what was left of her, everything from her stomach down had been destroyed in the blast, and she had died before her body hit the ground. As Tsunade's spirit rose higher into the sky, Minato fell to his knees and said a silent prayer for her. When he heard the sound of flesh hitting cloth, he turned his attention back to Naruto. Naruto turned away from the destruction he had caused and slowly walked over to Jiraiya, who was standing in front of the toad. Sage, he frowned as he felt something wasn't right, and when he opened his eyes again, he saw a strange dojitsu that Minato had never seen before. When Naruto's eyes widened, Minato wondered what could have surprised him, but then the pile of rubble and Jiraiya when the Death God looked at the Shinigami, he took a step back in fear. I was wondering where you went, Namikaze. If I hadn't been promised another powerful soul in exchange for yours for a while, I would have gone after you. When the dead, toneless voice came into Minato's mind, he shuddered. The god didn't wait for a reply before turning its attention back to Jiraiya and a smirking Naruto. Naruto, I don't know why you're so happy. No matter how quickly you heal or how strong you get, you can't beat the death god. As the Shinigami turned its head toward them, Jiraiya said, you seem to have lost your mind. Jiraiya, do you know how much it costs to ask the Shinigami for help? Naruto asked, smirking more and more, Minato's eyes grew wide when he realized that Jiraiya had forgotten something, of course I know, he'll take my soul as well as yours, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make to get revenge for the people you killed today, Jiraiya said, stupid old man, how do you think you'll pay his price, or did you forget that he owns your soul already, as Jiraiya's face went from grim acceptance to shocked horror, Naruto's smile turned smug, and the Shinigami answered before Jiraiya could, he's right, human, your soul is already mine if you don't have another soul to give me the deal is off and i'll take your soul right now instead of waiting until you die jiraiya hung his head as he let go of naruto and fell to his knees no i don't have any other soul to offer he looked up at naruto with tears in his eyes and said it looks like you win naruto this was my best move but it didn't work of course it didn't why do you think i changed the edo tensei the way i did my revenge would have been complete with or without that man here Besides Saratobi, you're the only other person who knows. The Shiki Fuin, and since you Kanoa people are so into self-sacrifice, I knew you would use it. Offering your soul to the Shinigami in exchange for Minato's was all I needed to do for this moment. Naruto laughed as Jiraiya's lifeless body fell over. He waved at the man's soul before it was eaten by the Death God. Turning to Minato, the Shinigami floated over and grabbed his soul. Minato gave his son one last smile before he followed Jiraiya into the Death God's stomach. The Shinigami turned to 
Naruto and laughed. It looks like it pays to plan ahead. Namikaze, you have gotten away from me today. Naruto nodded and said, Thank you, Shinigami-sama. I hope the souls I sent your way today won't be a bother. The Shinigami made a noise that sounded like a sigh and said, The paperwork will be annoying, but I've dealt with so many wars and genocides that this will be over quickly. Naruto gave one last bow. Grinning at the thought of the Death God having to fill out paperwork, the Death God didn't. Let him go, though, instead, it kept a close eye on him and seemed to think about something before talking to him. How interested are you in a deal, Namikaze? It asked. This made Naruto raise an eyebrow. What would a god want from an ordinary person like me? He asked. Tell me, do you know what happens to people's souls when they die? It asked, looking confused. I think they go to heaven or hell, Naruto said. That's right, the Shinigami laughed. And do you know where the souls I eat go? It Question to your stomach, right, said Naruto, wondering where this was going. It gets boring doing what we do, so Kami and I started a competition to see who could collect the most souls. When Yami was gone, I ran his domain, or hell, and I had a nice lead on Kami. But when Yami Jubi became a god, I lost control of hell and fell to third place. As a result, the rules had to be changed. And the souls were given Naruto could only nod, looking a little confused by the competition, with souls from Limbo, for different Hokages, and now the Toad Sage, he said, I should be second, Yami Jubi should be third with Orochimaru, the members of the Akatsuki, and a few other low-ranking souls, and Kami should be first with the Rakudu Sinin, your mother, and a few other souls, Naruto smiled when he thought about his mother, the fact that she could go to heaven showed that, even though she was a ninja, she must have been the good person he always thought she was, he had to stop thinking, because the Shinigami kept talking, unfortunately, I'm about to lose my lead on Yami. Once the people you killed today are counted, his score will go up to new heights. Because of this, I'll make you a deal. I know your second plan to get away from me, and I'll let you use it if you let me eat Uchiha Madara, a soul as powerful and well-known as his is worth almost as much as the Rakudu Sinin. Naruto thought about what the Death God had said and then asked a few questions. Why can't you just find and eat him yourself? What would I get in exchange for this? He asked, hoping that his questions wouldn't make him mad. The Shinigami laughed and said, Normally, I would do that, but the rules of the game say that if I eat a soul without being asked to, I don't get the points for it. Even if I ate Madara, it wouldn't count. As a reward, I'll give you two things. The first is access to three more multiverse realms, unlike Yami Jubi. I owe many gods favors, so they'll let you do whatever you what with one of their worlds, you can take anything you want and bring it here without worrying about getting in trouble. Naruto's evil smile grew as he thought of several things he had read about that would help him reach his goals. The Shinigami, sensing Naruto's happiness with the first reward, said, Finally, I'll give you the one ability you couldn't get before, the Zampakuto of the Shinigami King. You may have Riatsu and the abilities of his hollow, but splitting a soul and making a Weapon from it is something you can't. Naruto was surprised that the Death God knew what he wanted most. He had gone to the Bleach universe for one reason only, to get a Zampakuto spirit. It was what he wanted most. Someone who would understand him, who wouldn't and couldn't betray him, with whom he could share his plans and ideas before acting on them. Without giving it a second thought, Naruto agreed to the deal. And the Shinigami went back where it came from with a nod of its head as Naruto was getting ready to leave, he felt a presence enter the village, he used his telepathy to find out who it was, and he smiled because it was the one person he most wanted to meet, wow, the gods must have really hated Kanoha, since I destroyed it, my luck has only gotten better, first, I got the deal, and now the man I'm looking for comes to me, he took a step and disappeared as he turned toward Madara's chakra signature, Madara whistled as he looked around at the damage done by the mysterious, Uchiha, he couldn't feel a single living thing in the area, and he was sure that no one would escape with the flames of Amaterasu surrounding the whole village. He walked through a large trench left by what he thought was a very powerful attack. Madara tried to find out who had done this by using all of his senses. He stopped walking when he felt someone behind him. At first, there was no one within 30 meters of him, but then someone was standing right behind him as he learned as much about the Sharingan as I have. The Izanami technique is the only way someone could disappear so close to me, Madara was thinking, slowly turning around. Madara saw a boy with blonde hair and blue eyes. The Uchiha usually have black hair and eyes, so Madara was angry and decided to question the boy. Maybe he was hiding his Uchiha heritage behind a complicated act, Madara thought. He must be a strong Uchiha to fool even my eternal Mangekyo. And he asked, who are you? Naruto laughed at the founder of the Uchiha clan, I can't believe you've already forgotten me, Madara, he said as he turned his eyes on to their lowest level, you, Namikaze Naruto, you damn child, 
you would dare to show your face to me. First you free my puppet, then you destroy my organization and take my next body. I'm going to kill you, boy. Madara yelled Naruto's eyebrows raised. Your next dead body. You sound just like that snake team. I thought your Sharingan eyes made you immortal. Madara laughed at this and, reaching up, took off his mask to show Naruto the face of someone he knew, Abito Uchiha. I guess Madara found his body after he had died. Shows what you know. The Sharingan is a spiritual ability. All the Eternal Man Gekyo Sharingan does is keep my mind and soul immortal while my body rots away. That's why I made up that immortality. From my notes, which Orochimaru found, he was only able to make a weaker version of my Jetsu. Because of you, Itachi is dead. And if I don't find Sasuke, I'll have to live in the body of a commoner. Because of you, I'll have to live in the body of a weakling. This body belonged to a young Uchiha I found in a hospital in IWA. He had been rescued from a cave that had collapsed. My own body had reached its limits and was falling apart, and since he was the closest Uchiha, I took his body. Even this half-blind and weak body would be better than that of a non-Uchiha. Naruto laughed as Madara finished his speech. Man, now I know where Sasuke got his arrogance from. Thinking the Uchiha were so great, you people are so pathetic it's not even funny, oh, and Sasuke is dead, too, if you hurry, you might be able to get his ashes from what's left of the hospital, Madara yelled in anger before his visible light spun and black flames flew towards Naruto, Naruto Naruto smiled when his flames were stronger than Madara's and flew toward the man, he frowned when the flames went right through Madara's body and set the ground behind him on fire, both fighters thought the same about two different things. What did you say? Madara spoke first. What can you do with Amaterasu? He said. Since the Namakes and Uzumaki clans were more closely related to the Senju than to the Uchiha, you can't have the Sharingan. That's my dirty little secret. Why didn't my flame hurt you? Naruto asked with a smirk. That's my secret, he said. You may have been able to copy the Amaterasu, but that won't protect you from the power of the Sharingan. Running at Naruto, Madara started throwing punches at him. Naruto dodged all of them and threw one of his own but was surprised when his hand and then the rest of his body went right through Madara's. Madara spun on his toes, pulled out a kunai, and slammed it into the back of Naruto's head. A few seconds later, Naruto's body disappeared as a fist went through Madara's head. When Madara turned to look at him, he snarled, Ow, how did a spoiled brat like you get the Izanagi? You may have sent you DNA, but you definitely don't have Uchiha DNA. And you couldn't survive him experiment to combine the two the fact that you can still see means you don't have a sharing gun so how did you do it boy madara demanded ivy already told you old man that's my secret naruto taunted madara screamed in anger again and attacked naruto after they exchanged a few blows and jutsus naruto jumped back and yelled kamui a vortex opened right in front of naruto and started to pull him in once half of his body was through the vortex started to fade away and another naruto appeared a few meters away and fired a fire jetsu at Madara. As the flames passed through jumping away Madara yelled out Susanoo, you can't win, boy, this is one of the Uchiha clan's most powerful jetsus. Madara's Susanoo was twice as big as Itachi's, they were both red and wore large suits of armor. Instead of a shield and weapon, Madara's Susanoo held a large two-handed sword with three smaller blades on each side, giving it a total of seven branches, including the point Madara was proud when he saw. Naruto's eyes on the blade, so he said, that is the seven-headed leech, it can take a person's life force when it cuts them and give it to the user, healing any wounds they may have, however, it can't be used to heal wounds older than a day, which is why I still have this damaged body, that thing is almost as dangerous as Itachi's, so I should stay away from it no matter what, standing across from Madara, Naruto spiked his chakra and called out Susanoo, Madara's eyes widened as Naruto was. Surrounded by the cloaked shield of his own Susanoo, screaming in anger at having yet another Sharingan ability stolen by a commoner, he attacked Naruto with his own Susanoo, his blade hit Naruto's shield and bounced off, Naruto swung his Kuzurigama at Madara as the miniature scythe struck the seven-branched sword, Madara's eyes widened as his Susanoo vanished. He jumped away from the still-falling Kuzurigama and tried to call up his Susanoo again, but he was forced to drop to one knee in pain. Throughout his body, if I were you, I wouldn't bother, Naruto yelled at him, and Madara glared at him, what did you do, he asked, my Susanoo wields the binding blade, it can bind the chakra of anyone it cuts and seal any attack it cuts, by cutting your Susanoo, I have sealed it away for 24 hours, any attempts to use it will only cause pain, and don't ask how I can use it, that's another secret, Madara yelled out in anger for the third time in less than an hour, pouring a large amount of his 
Chakra into his eyes, he shouted Amaterasu. The large stream of black flames hit Naruto's shield. The shield was able to absorb some of the attack before it cracked and broke. The rest of the flames continued on, destroying the Susanoo and burning Naruto where he stood. A second later, Naruto reappeared a few feet to the side with his hand cocked back. He punched Madara in the face, sending him flying into the side of the trench they were fighting in. The look of surprise on Madara's face almost made Naruto laugh out loud. He had tried out a theory of his and it worked. Thinking Madara was like a spirit, he had coated his fist with pure concentrated Riatsu. His theory was right as he was able to hit Madara for the first time since the battle began. Running up to the man, he kicked him in the side, sending him rolling for a few feet. Why do you keep punching me? He yelled at Naruto. And Naruto gave him the same answer he always did while smirking. That's top secret no, don't tell me any. More secrets, I've had enough of this. When I'm done with you, Tsukuyumi, you'll tell me everything you know. He yelled as the illusion began to take hold. Naruto found himself attached to the familiar black cross in the black and red realm of the Tsukuyumi. Madara stood in front of him with his sword drawn. You have one chance to beg for forgiveness, boy. As he raised the blade, Madara said, you are a fool, Madara, he said. Before the Echiha could attack, Naruto said, I'll go on, don't you? Remember what I said to you the last time we met? Madara's normal half looked confused, so he said, I told you my eyes were made to control the mind. What did you do? You brought me to the place where my eyes are the most powerful, my own mind. As soon as he was done talking, the sky turned black and the ground turned white. Madara was tied to a cross, and Naruto stood in front of him. Your Uchiha pride made you ignore what I said. You thought your eyes would be stronger than mine, didn't you? Why else would you want to come into my domain? Naruto looked at the sword he was holding and slowly started to change it, making it longer and giving it a jagged edge. He could feel Madara trying to break out of the illusion and smiled. You can't get away from this, Madara. My chakra capacity is much higher than yours, and my chakra is stronger. You won't be able to beat me. He said that Madara's head dropped when he came to the same conclusion. His head snapped back up as the blade cut into his leg, and he screamed obscenities in here. Madara, I am a god. I've made you more sensitive to touch, so a small cut will feel like you lost a limb and had the wound dipped in salt. By the time we're done, you'll wish you'd never been born, and I have enough chakras to keep this illusion going for months. As he cut into Madara's arm with the blade, he gave himself a crazy grin that was for controlling the QB. He said over Madara's screams, this is something for my mother, remove scream this is. For all of the people you killed that day, remove scream you re-ruining my life, remove scream, and so it went. Naruto would remember a part of his life that was ruined because he was a demon vessel, the same demon that Madara had controlled and sent to destroy Kanoha. He would cut into the man, causing him as much pain as he could, never stopping, never resting. Madara broke down after the third day in the illusion, and Naruto got bored after the fifth. Naruto finally stopped, took a deep breath, and sat down on a chair he had made. For the first time in years, he felt at peace. While destroying Kanoha had been fun, slowly getting revenge on the man who had ruined his life was like ecstasy to him. He had loved hearing the man scream and cry for hours on end, and Madara had even started to tell him about his time-space technique to end the pain. Naruto found that the technique was called Izanami. The Izanagi could only be used by mixing the blood of a Uchiha and a Senju, while the Izanami could only be used by mixing the blood of two Uchihas and getting the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, the Izanagi, which was named after the Shinto god of life, and the Izanami, which was named after the Shinto goddess of death, were the exact opposites of each other. Breaking the illusion, Naruto and Madara came back to their bodies. In the real world, only five seconds had passed, but to Madara, it felt like an eternity. As soon as Madara's mind returned to his body, it shut down and put him into a coma to try to heal the damage it had done as madara's body fell to the ground naruto walked up to it while doing hand seals he grabbed madara's body and held it up while when he saw that uchiha madara's body wasn't moving the death god laughed boy you work quickly don't you it's not my fault that he came after me i thought i would have to find him first naruto said with a sheepish laugh the shinigami shook its head and put its hands through naruto's body when naruto felt the cold touch of death, he shivered. The Shinigami then grabbed Madara's soul and pulled it out of his body. Madara's soul left his body without a fight, and the Shinigami swallowed it whole. As the hand pulled away from Naruto, it grabbed his soul and pulled. The screaming soul that came out of Naruto's body was the Nibi no Shikaku, which had been held there by several Riatsu chains that broke as it was pulled out, Naruto thought. I knew I would find a use for him. The Shinigami held out a hand after eating the soul. In the palm was a small ring like the one Naruto wore, but the gem inside was black. 
Naruto took the ring and put it on his finger next to the one he already wore. You can use that whenever you want. I have already marked the three worlds that have the items you want. The second part of your request was already granted when I took the Nibi. You just need to look for your weapon and your soul. With a nod to the boy, the Shinigami stopped being Naruto smiled as wide as he could as. He tossed Madara's body several yards away into the black flames. Absorbing the Uchiha's knowledge, he used Madara's teleportation technique to appear on top of the Okage monument, or what was left of it. Sitting down, he released his control on his Amaterasu and watched as the flames rushed into the city, burning everything in their path. Closing his eyes, he began his search. Naruto opened his eyes and found himself in a familiar sewer system. He frowned as he looked around at what? used to be his mindscape walking the familiar path to where the demon's cage used to be he entered the large circular room and looked around half of the room was the old sewer that used to be his mindscape and the other half was the new throne room he was expecting sitting on one of the thrones was who he thought was his son he looked just like naruto but his colors were different naruto had light blonde hair that was almost white but this man had black hair his eyes were crimson red and gave off a light glow. His clothes were the same style as Naruto's, but the colors were backwards, red with black and black with red. Hello, Naruto, he said in a deeper voice than Naruto's. The man stepped forward and said, Hello, I guess you're the spirit of my Zampakuto. Correct, Naruto said. Welcome to my world. I'm sure you know where you are, he said. Yeah, my old and new mindscapes. Why is it like that? This is part of your test, and you have to pass it to call on me, he said. And what? exactly is this test his copy replied it's easy really all you have to do is choose you'll see the lives of both the old you and the new you and you'll decide which one you want said the spirit before naruto could answer a red orb rose from the floor of his old mindscape and flew into his body he fell to the ground and held his head in pain as memories flashed through his mind he first saw the smiling face of his mother as she held him then the face of his father as he marched off to his final fight after that he saw his life as a child spending most of his time alone and avoiding the people of the village he saw how he wasted his ninth birthday Hinata gave him his first gift he watched as he thanked her with tears in his eyes then Hinata's father came and destroyed the gift before it was even opened beat her in front of Naruto when no one else tried to help her and dragged her home she never spoke to him again after that day on his 10th birthday he had spent the whole day with Sandame and Irika, he watched as he smiled and laughed once he had caught his breath. A black orb rose from his new mindscape and entered his body. He grabbed his head again as the memories came back. He saw himself when he got his new power and when he traveled the multiverse before coming back home. He saw his adventures around the elemental nations as he went from place to place meeting new people and killing bandits and bounty hunters. He saw how he fought and killed everyone who tried to stop him and how his life slowed down after the memory stopped naruto collapsed on the floor gasping for air when he came to he stood up and turned to his copy who had returned to his seat on the throne as the spirit looked down at him it laughed now that you've seen your past and your present you have to make a decision about your future will you keep going down this path killing everyone who has done you wrong and anyone who stands in your way he asked and Naruto thought for a moment before answering, I will, I will do anything to reach my goals, you know my history, I refuse to go back to how I used to be, letting others walk all over me and smiling about it, I will walk this path no matter what it costs, after staring at him blankly for a few minutes, the spirit smiled and said, that was the right answer, you passed my test, Naruto, this was meant to teach you a lesson, never live with regret, do what you want, and don't let other people tell you what to do i won't serve someone who can't stick to their goals never live with regret naruto and keep moving forward i'll be with you when you wake up naruto walked back to the tunnel he had come from as he did the walls of the sewer disappeared and were replaced by the black walls of his new scape naruto opened his eyes and looked out over the endless wasteland that used to be kanoa the flames had destroyed everything leaving only a field of ashes sensing a lot of chakra nearby he spread out his senses and found the source several miles from the village focusing chakra into his eyes he zoomed in on the location and saw a group of samurai marching towards the village they all had the mark of the fire lord naruto stood up and looked down to see something fall to the ground when he picked it up it was his new blade and he whistled his approval the weapon was 60 inches long with a 50 inch blade that was half an inch wide the whole thing was slightly curved making it an odachi the blade was red with black writing running up one side which naruto saw to be his name on one side and his sword's name on the other taking a step off the cliff he vanished headed towards the approaching army 